So here we have my new acquisition, a 2004 Mark I Audi TT V6 3.2 DSG. Now it's got a permanent four-wheel drive in a little car with 247 brake horsepower, driving four wheels, which will give, in principle, 0 to 60 in about five and a half seconds and 155 mile an hour top end. Now these cars are available for anything between four and seven thousand pounds, depending upon the age, the mileage, and of course the specification. What I now realise is that the the white car is pretty rare. I'd like to know how many there are actually. Somebody said 200, somebody said 20. Uh, my understanding is this car was special order paint ordered specifically for the Birmingham NEC uh, motor show in 2004. Uh, unusually, it's also got the um, factory fit parking rear sensors. Um, I've joined the Audi TT Mark I forum on Facebook and found this to be incredibly helpful. A lot of knowledge, a lot of very useful people to connect with there. And I'll simply join the, uh, the Audi TT Owners Club. So the car came to me with just under 100,000 miles with a, not a fantastic history, but some. And I knew certainly that I'd have to do some things to the car. Um, the first thing is that it's going in for a full service. Uh, now, uh, it would appear there are two main players close to where I am, North London South Hearts, which is the TT shop in Bedford. Just a bit further up the road is the uh, Quattrotech guys. Um, in fact, it's them I've decided to go to, not because anything wrong with the TT shop, top shop, in fact quite helpful, but simply the fact that I happened to pass by Quattrotech the other day um, whilst delivering another car to a friend and popped in and they seem really nice guys, so it's going in there. Um, I do know that we need to get two new shocks uh, to the rear and two new coils to the coils to the rear, and new pads and brakes to the front. It's already been up on a ramp. We've had a good look around, and indeed there's a little bit of corrosion at the rear subframe, which we rubbed down and either sprayed with hammerite or detrinol. Um, a little bit of paint here and there. Certainly, there's about a four centimetre area here to be looked after properly, not filled, but metal let in, resprayed. It feels like it's twin or, or three three ply metal. Um, the the rest of the car is pretty good. A little bit of uh, paint needing at the on the bottom of the front sills where it's been jacked up in place. Interior really good for a hundred thousand mile car. It just goes to show how brilliantly built these uh, these two thousands Audis were. Still are, of course. Uh, I love the red leather interior. It came with a uh, radio cassette, which, well, you've got to upgrade it, haven't you? So I bought a radio CD online from a reputed provider, and guess what? The uh, the code doesn't work, so it's going to go back, um, hopefully for a replacement rather than, than, a, uh, than a refund. So I'm sure those of you that know TTs much better than me will be able to tell me the exact differences, but from what I can see, we've got a, a very, very different front spoiler. The, uh, the cutouts here. So you probably hear it's a bit windy here. It's, it's August bank, it's, it's May bank holiday in Hertfordshire. It hasn't rained yet, but it looks like it's going to, doesn't it? And of course it's got this, what I believe is the unique 3.2 spoiler black which I think looks fantastic with the whites. Now, of course, back in 2004, white just wasn't popular. Of course, today it's really, really, um, everybody seems to want white cars. I've got a white Golf GTD as my daily driver. Some people I know put the, uh, the uh, racist sounding mill. I'm not gonna do anything like that. This is just gonna stay as a nice daily driver, I'm not a track day weapon, it's not gonna have go fast a bit here and there, it's just going to be hopefully improved gradually to a car that will last maybe another 100,000 miles. A little bit of vibration, uh, revs, I will. Again, I'm ready for that. Um, I look forward to reporting back to you and telling you on the progress of how this little pocket rocket is uh, improving my life. Um, you've got to say, for this kind of money, it delivers nigh on Porsche Carrera 4S performance. Now, okay, it's not a Porsche. Um, I've got a couple of Porsches. I understand what they do brilliantly well, but for the money and the size, this is just a fantastic package. Quite a neat little boot behind the front seat, the, the seats, which can be put down, and everything just feels so right. When you get into the car, the ergonomics are, I think, just perfect. So here we go. 
There we go, just over 100 169, 692 miles. Um, as I've said, that's going to be replaced. But it's a nice place to be, isn't it? I think particularly the red interior is very striking. Let's start her up. For those of you interested where we are, this is called Folly's Arch, which is uh, just outside of Britain's Park and, and Potter's Bar. So um, I'm thrilled. Uh, I love the fact that DSG gearbox you can change with the paddles and it actually blips when you go down, which is more you can say for my 2000 uh, Golf GTD. That also has the, DG, uh, the DSG gearbox. Um, so it's got cruise control, it's got a good hi-fi system, Bose or Bose, again somebody please let me know how that's pronounced. I just love the way all the, the way the, the dials and switches work, you know you pop these out for your heated rear, for your heated seats and you turn them and it tells you on, by the red number of red dots how hot you've got it or not. I think it's perfect packaging, everything just fits so well. As my late father would said, if it, if it feels right, if it looks right, it probably is right. Let's see how we get on and I'll let you know.